The following program is a presentation of Mount Zion Media Ministries. Um, today, the subject of the sermon, continuing the legacy of commitment. Continuing the legacy of commitment. And today is a message for the members of Mount Zion, but not just the members of Mount Zion, because whatever church you belong to, um, this message is applicable in your house as well. And if you're not a member of the church, this message can help you as you prepare to make up your mind to become a member today. Amen. We are celebrating 151 years in the life of the Mount Zion Church. And there are people, not all, but some people, who would say that Mount Zion is a great church, that Mount Zion is a good church, that Mount Zion is an impactful church. But any attempt to define or describe or categorize Mount Zion today is a sin, if I can, can be that strong. It's a sin to try to define, to describe, to ca categorize Mount Zion today without giving some consideration to the Mount Zion of yesterday. Because if it were not for the Mount Zion of yesterday, we wouldn't be where we are today. And as we talk about um, continuing the journey, and that's the focus of our theme this year, continuing the journey. I think it's important that we look back over that journey at those who have come before us. And I think that what you will discover is, matter of fact, I know what you will discover is, that the thing that has made Mount Zion strong over the years, the thing that has ensured not only that Mount Zion survived, but that Mount Zion strived, and not just strive, but strive and succeed, is some committed people. And some of you just went real deep on me, and you said, well, I thought he was going to say it, it's because of God. It's a given. If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, we wouldn't have made it. But some of us are so spiritual that we want to put it all on God and none of it on us. We want to sit on our hands and expect God to just make it happen. But church and life does not happen without some involvement from people who partner with God. And not just any kind of person, but people who are committed to God are the people that work with God to make a difference. And hear me, I didn't say that the only people who could be a part of the church were committed people. But I'm saying to you the ones that make a difference, the ones that make an impact, are the ones who are committed. And not just to the church, but just in life general. If you're not committed to whatever it is you're doing, you are not going to be very successful at it. One of, one of the gifts given to me uh, by God through a man is when I became pastor after about a year, the late deacon Jesse Jones called me and asked me to come by his house. He said he had something he wanted to give me. And so I go, and there in the floor are three boxes. And they are ledgers, handwritten records of over 50 years of the minutes and the history of Mount Zion Church. Minutes recording, because he was the secretary of deacons and trustee meetings, of church conferences, of other decisions that the church made and other actions that the church took and all of it is recording, recorded there and handwritten the giving of members and the participation of members line by line, year by year, written with his own hand. And when I started to read that over a period of time, this common thread just kept jumping in my mind. There's no way, given what these people had, that they could have done all that they have done 
except there were some committed people in that crowd. And I'm glad to be able to say that when I came to Mount Zion, there were people who had been here many more than 50 years, but all of them had been here before I got here. And what I started to see was that there was a core group of committed people who were determined to make sure that Mount Zion was successful. And what I want to say to you today, that those of us who are here enjoying church now, that we need to pause right here and give those people a hand of appreciation. I could call some names, but time won't permit me to go through all of them, and I dare not call one and not go through all. But suffice it to say, they were committed. And as we think about co continuing the journey, one of the things that we've got to take from them is this legacy of commitment. We need people today who are part of Mount Zion that are determined no matter what, I'm going to be committed to the church. And then I'm going to be committed to this church. Let me explain what I mean. That passage that I just read, Jesus is in the last days of his life on earth and he has these disciples that he's equipping uh, to carry on after him. And they've been invited to follow him. And they have been following him. But he pauses now to make sure that they know what they signed up for. It wasn't just about eating free meals in the desert, in the park. Y'all missed that, didn't you? It wasn't just about the celebrity of Jesus or following a celebrity. But open your Bibles again. Turn your Bibles on if you turn them off. Amen. Let me. I'm going to skip verse 22. Let's, let's start at verse 23. I'm coming back to 22 in, in a little while. But here is what, what I want you to see. Jesus is calling on them to consider the cost of following him. Following him requires a certain kind of commitment and listen as he lays it out. And he said to them, those who were his followers, especially those 12, if any man, let me help the translation, if any person will come after me, stop right there. See that if the if says it's conditional and it's optional. Everybody don't want to come to him. But if you exercise the option to come to him, then I got some conditions for you. And can I tell you, what comes behind the if is determined by your and my desire. I have to you have to have a desire to come after him. Look at it again. If any person, any man will come after me, don't miss that, come after me. Can I, can I, can I ask you a question? Do you have a desire to come after him? See, no, look again at because I'm I'm getting ready to say something to you, and I don't want you to think I just made this up. I said, if any man will come after me, the desire that you have must be for him. I told you a moment ago, I said, D church and A church. See, when you come after him, you're coming to Jesus Christ, who is the head of D church. And your desire to become a part of Mount Zion 
is a desire to become a part of a particular church. But before you can commit to a particular church, you've got to be committed to the church. And so your desire is to come to him, and that's critical, because if you just come to Mount Zion, or to Beulah Land, or to Shiloh, Rose Hill, Pleasant Hill, on the hill. If you just come to the church for the sake of coming to the church, you're going to be disappointed and you will find reasons to leave. Because folk in church, first of all, everybody ain't saved. Second of all, everybody not going to treat you right. And third of all, even the saved ones cut up sometimes. And so your commitment has to be deeper than a church, deeper than a preacher, deeper than a friend, deeper than a choir. Don't, don't come to Mount Zion because you like the Usher suit and you just want to put on one of them Usher suit. Don't let that be your only reason. It's, it, it's okay to want to participate, but your desire has to be for him. Because, you see, your, your joy, your, your level of satisfaction with the church will come out of your relationship with him. And if you don't come to be with him, then you're going to miss the relationship part. And let me say something else. If you come to get what he got, you still going to miss it. Because first of all, he ain't going to let you plan. He ain't going to just let you come get his stuff and not want him. Did I say that right? And so he says, I need you to have a desire for me. As the deer panteth after the water, so does my heart panteth or thirsteth after God. So it's there. It's theirs. A desire. And you see, the Holy Spirit cooperates with God to put that desire in you. And we have to respond to it. And so, and, and, and so this, this commitment starts with a genuine desire. But, but the commitment also has another part to it. If you want to, you can come. But then he says, if any man will come after me, let him first. Did I make that up? Let that man... Deny himself. And there's some, and this is in, 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 in the gospel of Mark and Matthew as well. And so in there it says, let him first deny self. You see, that is a command for every person because the God who made us, he knows us. And he knows who sits on the throne in your life. And you know who that is? Self. Now y'all, y'all don't have to tell me. I know because I'm one of y'all. Self-preservation. You, you want to be taken care of. You want to be happy. You want life to be good for you, and you want what you want out of life. That's natural, but it's not spiritual. And so he's helping us move from the natural to the spiritual. And so he says, you must first deny yourself. Look, look if you will, at, um, at verse 24, because this is tied to denying yourself. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Deny self. Here it is, plain and simple. So he's telling you, I'm, I'm not a theologian. So I don't know all those theological terms and you know, I find somebody deeper than me for that. I just make the Bible plain. Here it is. He says, if you enter life full of selfish ambition, then those things you're running after, you will never get them. But if you have as the chief ambition in your life to follow me and serve me, then what you're looking for in life, you'll get it. 
come close to me. See, see, um, you really need to understand that stuff you're chasing, really not stuff you're chasing. So for, for example, you're chasing money, but it's really not the money you're chasing. You are chasing money because you think money will give you something that money can't give you. You think that if you get enough money, you will have security. But all the money in the world won't give you security. Ask the folk who got it. Ask them how secure they are when they got millions of dollars in the bank, but they go to the doctor and the doctor say, or oh, they want peace and they ain't got no peace. Or oh, they looking for love and they can buy some lust, but they can't buy their love. Ask them how miserable it is to know that somebody is laying up in the bed with you, not because they want you, but because they want what you got. Ask them how miserable it is when your road dogs and your running buddies ain't studying you, they just want what you, because you set the table, because you put them in a car, because you put them in a house. you chasing material things because it helps to um, give you identity. You know, I'm somebody because of my address. I'm somebody because of the square footage in my house. I'm somebody and I got peace and I have arrived. I've been successful. But baby, material stuff. And, and again, I'm not hating against that. I'm simply trying to tell you what you think that gives you. Constructions don't, don't make a home. Ask folk who live in a nice house but wish they could get in a crib with somebody who they could. <laughs> I got me one of them sleep them. I, I, I want one of them sleep them my beds. I'm telling you now. But I don't want it because I think it's going to help me sleep. Because if I got what Jesus gives to me, which is peace that passes all understanding. I can sleep on the floor and be comfortable, and I have done that, you know. But I just want me a sleep number. So I can raise my side up and Diane be laying down. And then when I start snoring, she can raise it up. I'm just waiting on the sleep number store to open. That's all I'm waiting on. So. And, 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 and so he says, when you, when you make life about you, the stuff you're chasing will never give you life. But if you make it about me and come after me, I give you some joy that the world can't give, some joy that the world can't take away. I give you some swagger. To every room you walk in, folk pause. They start whispering, who that? Who that? Who, who is she? Who is he? They must be somebody. And you say, yeah, I, I am somebody. Not because of what I have, but I am somebody because of who's in me. I am somebody because of what he says about me and not what y'all think about me. And the reason I walk like I walk because... See, 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 see that, see that, see that. And, 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 so, and so he says, stop making life about you. Stop tripping. I don't wake up in the morning to bless you. That's what God said. I don't wake up in the morning to make you happy. I don't wake up in the morning to give you stuff. And the people around you don't exist to please you. They're made to worship me. And he says, so, so deny yourself. Can I, can I just drop this on you? This is extra. You, 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 you really would be a lot better off in a lot of ways if you denied yourself because self got you spending money you ain't got. Got you going places you shouldn't be going, saying stuff you shouldn't be saying, doing, and, it, and it's just self. How you know, Pastor Simmons, because I'm, I'm one of y'all. So, so, so here we go, here we go. And so there's this desire and there's this denial, but then there's something else. Look at this dedication that is demonstrated in sacrifice and service. 
If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Look. Look at that action. Take up your cross. And the cross is symbolic of sacrifice and service. And the sacrifice has to be there because there is no real service without sacrifice. And that cross is a symbol of death. Jesus had a cross to carry. And in, the, in that particular day, crucifixion was a common thing. And so people were charged to carry their own cross up to Calvary. They were carrying their own source of death. So the cross became a symbol of death. And again, to deny yourself means you got to be willing to die to self. And sacrifice and service. I was at a veteran's cemetery and I saw this and it stuck with me. Uh, and it said, some gave and some gave all. That was profound. Some had to give their life. But they all gave something. And so let me just slow down right here and ask a question. What is your level of sacrifice and service to the church, to God himself, and to your church, whatever your church is. Let me, let me just throw a few questions out there. What kind of sacrifices are you willing to make for your church? Those of you who were here not long ago, two or three Sundays, my brother preached, and he shared with y'all some counsel that he gave me, and I'll repeat it. He said, Daniel... It's a wonderful thing that the Lord, you know, led y'all to be at a church. But here's what you got to know. It's those older, committed people that's going to pay for it. Y'all remember he said that? Then y'all remember he said, he said now, and like T. Marshall Jones, you get, get that money from T. Marshall Jones before he leave. <laughs> and what he didn't tell you is how, how that conversation ended. And he went on to talk about how that generation was committed. And then this is what he said about the young folk. Because the young folk ain't going to give you no money. He said, because they're spending their money on cars and houses. Somebody says shoes and clothes and student loans and, and pleasure. They're in Paris. They're in the Bahamas. They, they're in the Dominican Republic. They're they down in Fort Lauderdale on the beach. They're they all over. And, and, and my word to him is, I'm not against them doing that, but here is my job as pastor. One, not to hold T. Marsh's generation responsible for taking care of a generation that chooses not to pay their own way. And my job is to teach this generation that you need to learn, like I told you last Sunday, what time it is so that you make appropriate sacrifices and appropriate choices. There's some stuff you need to give up in order to provide service to the church and your local church. Some sacrifices you need to make with your time. The church shouldn't be a place of convenience for you. Well, I'm going to show up on Sunday morning and I won't show up on every Sunday, but I'm busy. I, you don't know what's, all, what, what's on my plate. I ain't got time for that. Excuse me? Every minute you got, God gave it to you. And you mean you're going to stand up in his face and tell him he's given you 24 hours a day and your day is going to be on your agenda and not his? You ain't got time for him? Your talents and your gifts Mount Zion and every church need members who serve and who have been gifted to serve. But God knows it's hard to get us in service. And I'm not talking about Sunday morning service. Now, it's easy to do this. It's easy to get folk to line up across this front. It's easy to get folk to line up and shine on Sunday morning. But when it's time to serve, it's hard. Can I be transparent and just, just help a few ministers out? And so, and so for example, we try to uh, help families out that got small children. And um, so that they can, the parents can come in to worship. We, 
we built, we spent money investing in that fine nursery around there so that the children could be dropped off and you get a little tag and we bought technology so that if your child get to cutting up back there, we can just put the number and say that with the parent of T24, please come back. He's tearing up the nursery. And out of all of the members we have, it should be that there are enough folk that those who serve in there can take turns. And if you just work once a year, it wouldn't be a burden on anybody. But as it is, because folk don't have time and don't want to use their gifts in service back there, I've got a core group of people who may get to come in the sanctuary twice a year because we can't get anybody to go back there. Not even the parents who drop their children off and want somebody else to keep them. I ask y'all if I could be real. I ain't fussing. I'm just being, I'm being real. And, and, and so, and how can this church continue to be impactful and to be grateful when folk don't want to sacrifice time and give gifts what God has put into them when we struggle for teachers and then and, and, and that treasure part so yeah, I don't you know God is not opposed to you buying cars and houses and going on vacation here's what he is opposed to you spending his money to buy when, when I, I, um, I part of my teaching for my children was intentional uh, in, in this way, I would give them money and I, I sent them to the store on purpose and said, buy this and buy that. And then when they came back, they didn't um, give me my change. <laughs> and especially if they wanted something, I always gave them more than was needed because I was trying to teach them a lesson. I said, um, where's the change? And then, you know, you know, you know how children, they got to start, let me, let me tell you something. What I gave you was yours. And that portion beyond that, that was mine. And I want my money. I am not playing. I'm not joking. If you don't go back in that room and come back with my money, that that you bought, I'm taking it back to the store. I'm getting all the money back. I'm going to take my portion, and then I'm going to give you what's left, and then you can go do what you want. But I want my money. And then I tell them, and that's the way I want you to be with God. What God gives you 100%, a portion of it belongs to him, and don't you steal from him. Don't you take from here, daddy, that ain't stealing. It is because the Bible says, will a man rob God? I said, I don't want to raise children who are thieves. I said, you know how we watch the news and there are people holding up liquor stores and convenience stores and robbing people? Ain't no different. Stealing is stealing. They're just stealing from a man in a store. You stealing from God. People who are committed will make sacrifices and not give out of convenience but plan their giving thanks for watching be blessed and continue walking in the light